Are you ready for an extreme makeover of the mind? With the producer and host of A Better You Podcast, the transformational coach whose assignment is to challenge people to change, grow, and evolve into the individuals they were created to be. Here is Dr. Anthony McFarland, providing you with practical tools and wisdom for everyday life challenges for you to win in life, relationships, and finances. Hey guys, welcome to ABU Podcast. I'm excited to be with you this week. Listen, I want to talk to you about something that I believe that most people don't oftentimes talk about or entertain uh, themselves with, if I can say it like that. Here's my question for you today. What do you really know about yourself? I say this all the time. Oftentimes we want other people to know us. We want to know other people. But what do you really know about yourself? What do you think you should know about yourself? Do you know what makes you tick? Do you know what turns you on? Do you know what turns you off? The most important subject none of us have ever been taught growing up is how to learn about ourselves. One of the hardest questions in life to answer is, what do you want to do, right? Especially when you have no idea of what you want to do or you're going through a transition in life. I can't tell you how many times I, you know, kind of got it wrong and did not understand how to answer that question. Uh, you know, I had the question, you know, what's next? What, what, what do I want to do? And just didn't have the answer. It's also tough to respond to that question, even though you really do know what you want to do with your life, but aren't doing it yet because you don't know how to make it happen. Or there's some sense of fear, again, because maybe you, you're not even in a position to trust yourself. So it, it's a very simple question, but yet it's tough for many people to answer. It's, it's a tough question for uh, many of the people that we know to answer that question. Knowing yourself, knowing yourself simply means understanding who you are, what you like and dislike, your strengths and weaknesses, what's important to you. It's about being aware of your thoughts, your feelings, and motivations, which oftentimes helps you make better choices and, and live a more authentic and fulfilling life, right? So I want to go over what a full self-assessment looks like, what it is, and what you need to learn about your life so that you can fulfill your purpose, so that you can make sure you're in the right lane, doing the right work. Unfortunately, we, we are never given a process, uh, a method. Uh, I call it the blueprint framework or strategy for learning about ourselves. So therefore, we go throughout life not having a blueprint because there's some things that we need to learn, which first starts with us, right? Which first starts with you. We, we learn about ourselves purely through trial and error oftentimes, and it seems very inefficient. But then again, at the same time, no one has ever, no one has ever been you before in human history history. And so how can someone else tell you who you are or tell you what you should be doing if they don't know you? And yes, your our parents uh, in some respects know us best. Maybe a brother or a sister knows us best, but do they know us enough to tell us who we are and help us understand ourselves? What I want you to understand is learning about yourself takes a lot of time. It, it's not a one session. You're not going to get it right here in this podcast, but it's well worth the investment. And what I'm saying is you investing in you, you investing time into yourself. There are so many people, there are people that I know of, there are people that I counsel, there are people that I coach that really don't like themselves. Let me ask you another question and pop it in below. How much time do you spend with yourself? Do you like spending time with yourself? <laughs> Again, oftentimes we want to spend time with other people. We want other people to prioritize us and spend time with us. But do you spend time with yourself? The more you know about yourself, the better decisions you'll make about the lifestyle you've always wanted to live, the relationships that you always wanted to be in, whether that be personal uh, or business. 
So it, it requires self-knowledge. Self-knowledge will enable you to use your, your, your energy more efficient by aligning uh, your behaviors, your habits with your purpose. And the more you know about yourself, the more confidence you'll have in your decisions. Why? Because you know what you need. You know what's best for you. Even when it comes to being an entrepreneur or business owner or just working for someone else, being self-employed. One of the things that I've learned about myself, whether that be working for someone else, and wow, I have not worked for someone else in over 28 years or so. But you know, when you're when you're self-employed, you learn a lot about yourself if you're open to learn. And and maybe I would even say if you're open to be honest with yourself. And the reason that you learn more about yourself is because you spend more time with yourself. You get to know your quirks. You get to know your strengths, your weaknesses. You get to know what works for you, what doesn't work for you. You're, you're paying a little bit more attention to yourself and the decisions that you make and the failures from some of those decisions, as well as the wins from some of those decisions, which has a lot to do with learning yourself, knowing yourself, knowing your who, your do, your what, your why, right? And so the more I've been able to enhance my personal productivity is a result of knowing myself and knowing what not only what I need, not only what I want, but what I'm supposed to be doing. The most effective way for learning about yourself is not just through self-experimentation or self-assessment, but getting to know God, which in turn enables us to know ourselves. Think about this. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Someone once sent me a note and um said, uh, hey, pastor, because I don't really know who I am or who I'm supposed to be, I end up molding myself to the expectations of others. So I need to know who I am. I need to know my identity so that I can really understand what I'm supposed to be doing in this season of my life. And it's true that when you don't know who you are, you live for other people's approval. You live by someone else's commentary, someone else's view or 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 belief of who you are, what you should be doing. But God offers so much more than that. He wants you to live in the true identity that he's given to you to live in. The Bible tells a, a, a famous story of someone who chose to live in his God-given identity, and that's the story of Moses. Moses was the greatest leader in the entire Old Testament. He led the Jews to freedom after 400 years of slavery in Egypt. Uh, he received the Ten Commandments from God. He credited. He was credited with writing the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. But most importantly, Moses started life as a slave. Think about that. As an infant, he was placed in a river basket as his mother tried to save him from the genocide. He was found by Pharaoh's daughter and, and raised as a prince and the rest is history. Hebrews chapter 11, 12 through 27, it really sums up the story and says, by, by faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. That that speaks volumes about who he was, who God created him to be, and what he was created to do. And, and scripture lets us know he regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasure of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to a greater reward. And so scripture records by faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. And that was God Almighty. So what happened to Moses during those in-between years? Well, he transformed. How did he transform from slave into prince? How did he become willing to, to leave it all behind, to lead God's people, to to be one of the greatest leaders in his in his time and era. Well, in short, he grew up. He grew up physically. He grew up mentally. He grew up spiritually. He started to seek God's face. He started to talk to God more. Let me share something with you. When you're in the desert, when you're in dry places in your life, come on, when you're on the backside of the mountain, you talk to God more. When you're in the place of in between, you talk to God more. And eventually he settled on the answer. He refused to be known as 
the son of Pharaoh uh, of, of Pharaoh's daughter. So he grew up and he refused to keep doing what? Living a lie. How many of us, how many people do you know that they're living a lie? How, how many of you would be honest with yourself? You know, I, I've been living a lie. See, he came into, in his relationship with God, he came to know his identity and chose to live like God created him to live. And you can't choose to live how the creator created you to live until you choose to live like who God created you to be. And that shows a pivot. That shows a significant moment in time and space where the light comes on. So you may still be saying, well, how can you know your God-given identity? By getting to know God better. The closer you and I get to God, the better you're going to understand yourself. That's because God is your creator. The more you understand your creator, the more you understand yourself because you are his creation. Whenever you want to find out about a product, you have to go to the manufacturer. You have to go to the manufacturer's book. And so just like Moses, each and every one of us, you in particular, you face a choice. You will pretend to be someone you're not for the rest of your life, or you will choose to live as the person God created you to be. If you choose to live as God created you to be, some people may not approve of you. <laughs> That's the other extreme, but that won't really matter. You'll know who you are. You'll know where you're going, and you'll have the approval of God. You may not have the approval of your best friend. You may not have the approval of a parent. You may not have the approval of whoever you look up to. But when you have an encounter with God, when you know who you are and you've learned who you are from God the Father, your Father, let me share something with you. The best is yet to come. Here's what I've learned from my personal uh, work, my personal pursuing of God, my my personal, what I would call a God-driven self-assessment. And that is, I've learned what my purpose is. I've learned what my why is. Think about it. What does purpose mean? Purpose is the reason for which something is done. It's the reason for which something is created or, or the reason why something exists. So here's what I want you to understand. My purpose, your purpose, is found in why God created me, why God created you. See, the question that you have to answer is, what was his intention or objective for placing you in the world for such a time as this? Why? Your why is a statement of purpose that describes why you do what you do, why you do the work you do and why you live the lifestyle you do. It, it, it's, your, it's your calling. It's, it's your conviction. It, it's your mission statement. It, it is a vision of your life and work which drives you. Scripture says, where there's no vision, the people perish. So it's important that you and I have vision. It's important that you understand who you are, what you've been created for. Otherwise, you, 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 you live your life aimlessly. So think about it like this. You can think of the purpose of your life as like a combination of God's vision, values, motivations, and why he gifted you to do the work that you've chosen to do. The reason that you're doing what you do, specifically if it's in line with your purpose, it's in line with your calling, is because he placed those gifts and talents and abilities on the inside of you. Understand, my purpose gives both direction and meaning to my life. If I, if I don't understand my purpose, I lack meaning and I lack direction. So here's what you have to understand. When you know your purpose, when you know uh, your who, when you know your why, it grounds you. It grounds me in my why God created me to be who I am. It gives me Christ-centered values when I, I have a very important decision to make and keeps me focused on my core beliefs, which keeps me on the path of Again, God's purpose for my life. When I'm centered, when I'm aligned with his purpose for my life, when you're aligned with God's purpose for your life, success is inevitable. When purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. So when I understand my why, when I understand my purpose, when I understand my why, let's go back to why, my why. I, I want to help people find more meaningful reasons for existing by being and doing who they've been called to be and do in life. So my assignment is to, to love on people and to challenge people to change, grow, evolve, and become the best version of themselves, the best 
individual that God has created them to be, to operate at maximum peak potential. So I believe everyone has a great story inside of them, and it deserves to be told. And yes, you're, our parents, uh, in some respects, everyone has great purpose on, ins on the inside of them, and it deserves to be express. It deserves to be lived out. Why? That's the way God would have for each and every one of his sons and daughters to live out purpose according to why he created them. See, you don't have to ask people to give you permission to be yourself. You've already been given permission when God calls you, when he cre when He God called you, when he created you and he chose you and he authorized you to be the best version of himself and to live out his story for your life. So when I start to understand that, it's a game changer. And I think oftentimes, because we don't know who we are, we don't know our why, we don't know our purpose, we lack values. There's no way that you can seek God's face, learn who God, who it is that God created you to be, and then not have his values. So when you think about Christian values, love, compassion, respect, think about love. When you really love the way God would have for you to love, you think about others before yourself in some respect. You understand that life is bigger than you. It, God created us to live our lives to make a difference in other people's lives, to love the way he loves us, to love others the way that he loves us, to demonstrate that love to others as he constantly demonstrates to us. And the same thing with compassion. Compassion enables us to stand in someone else's shoes, to see life through their lens so that we can assist them in getting the win that they want. And then think about, again, respect, love, compassion, respect. Again, Christian values, valuing everyone and everything and celebrating. Watch this. Our difference is you don't have to be like me. I don't have to be like you. We can have difference of opinion, and I still think the world of you. I have a dear friend like that. We we differ on some views and beliefs, but that's still that's still my guy, right? I can still celebrate him because God made him uniquely different than me. So again, when we think about values, right? I mean, think about what I just said. That ties back into loving others. I mean, Scripture says, let all that you do be done in love. That's 1 Corinthians uh, 16, 14. So I, I'm then able to live like a life filled with godly morals, live a, 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 a moral a moral life that will actually please God. You know, there's a Scripture that says in, in 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 19 and 20, uh, it says, do you not know that your body is a is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Did you did you hear that? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. You are bought at a price. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Honor God with your life. God requires us to live a moral life, a Christ-centered life. So the essence of God's character is love and integrity. And the two greatest commands of, of Jesus also emphasizes love, right? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. The second greatest commandment is to do what? Love your neighbors as yourself, as we love ourselves. Most people can't love others because they don't even love themselves. Most of us are fighting others because they are not giving us what we want, giving us what we need, loving us the way we need for them to love us, but they don't even love, they have not learned how to love themselves because they have not learned God's love. And when you have not learned God's love, it's hard for you to learn how to love yourselves, and so therefore you're not able to love others. Perhaps love is the most important value that Jesus would have us take away from him. It's also, again, the first and foremost value we should recognize and be willing to demonstrate. When we start doing things like love and for love, we find ourselves filled with just that joy and that gladness as we do it. Why? Because we're making someone else happy. We're helping meet somebody else's need. We're serving. We're, come on. So when I really get this, I start to understand that love is at the heart of God's message. That's why when people ask me, who, who are you? Watch this. I'm that guy that loves people, and I love to see people win. 
So I challenge people to change, grow, evolve, and become the best person that God has created them to be. Again, values, faithfulness. Uh Uh-oh. (laughs) <laughs> Again, a lot of us want others to be faithful to us. But are you faithful? Are you faithful to God? Our pr- As a believer, our primary faithfulness belongs to God. Being faithful to him means his lordship, having, watch this, lordship in him. The lordship is recognizing that he alone is the one and only true and living God. The best way to prove Christ's lordship in our lives is through demonstrating it's through obedience. It's through integrity. It's through discipline. This is what faithfulness to God is really all about. Jesus said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? See, our faithfulness to him can be seen in our acts, in our actions, in our behavior, in acts of obedience to his will, his word, his way for our lives. Proverbs 28, 20 says, a faithful person will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. Why? Priorities are out of whack. You have no values. A lot of people claim God, but they have no values. A lot of people claim to be good people, but they really don't have godly values. And then you wonder how that person screwed you over as such. Again, the word of God says, hey, nonetheless, Faithfulness can be applied in different areas of our lives, even in the simplest little ways. Jesus also said that whoever is faithful in the very little is also faithful in the much. And one who is dishonest in in very little is also dishonest in much. And so thus, the true testing of our faithfulness is in the small things. And when we're faithful in the small things, let me share something with you, and you start to experience the blessing because you know your why, you know your purpose, come on, you know your who, then it's easy for you to be generous with your gifts, your talents, and your abilities. It's easy for you and I to be generous with our time and our money. The Bible tells us to share generously with those in need, and good things will come to us in turn. That's what the Word of God tells us. Why? Because each of us has something to offer to someone in need. What is it that you need at this very hour, this very time and space and season of your life? I'd like for you to pop it in because I'd like to see how I can help you fill that void, meet that need, get the resources that you need, the tools that you need, whatever it is that you need. See, we can give our money and our time to charity. We can be a good friend to someone who is in need of someone to embrace them, to love them, to encourage them, or or, or someone who is sick or, or lonely. It's nothing when you understand who you are and the gift that God created you to be, to volunteer in ministry, to volunteer in community, to to choose an occupation, maybe as an entrepreneur, understanding that, watch this, if I just serve people, everything else is going to work out for me. And so that helps us with giving unselfishly of our time to to our, our circle, to our friends, to our spouse our children, our parents. Now, let me tell you what that does not mean. This does not mean we are obligated to share our time or money with people. And yes, you're our parents uh, in some respects. And yes, you're our parents uh, in some respects who are clearly not in need, but just want to use or abuse us, use us for what we have. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. I, I, I do want to share this with you. It's important that whoever you say you are, you practice it. You demonstrate it. You be that. It's important that whatever you're saying to other people, you're living by that. What what am I saying? It's important that if when you understand your why, when you understand your purpose, that you're not a hypocrite. If there was any one group of people that Jesus couldn't stand, it was hypocrites. The Pharisees of Jesus' time were hypocrites. They were religious uh, 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 a religious and political party that insisted on on very strict observances of the law, whether that was tithing, of uh, rituals, purity, whatever. They they had a whole list of things. At the same time, many of the Pharisees forgot the true spirit and intent of that law and became self-indulgent, self-righteous, snobs, and greedy, greedy, greedy guts. And we see that today in politics. We see that today in different forms of leadership. And that's what led Jesus to, to make remarks like, woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. This is Jesus. 
He said, you, you're like the whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, Jesus said, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. See, it's not the things that we say that really matter. It is the things that we do. And if we claim to be people of God, if we claim to be something great, something special, and do not allow the word of God, the values, the principles of the word of God to guide our lives, we are nothing but mere hypocrites. And how can God bless a hypocrite? He can't. So our assignment is to understand, get to know who we are first so that we can do everything, so that we can be and do everything that God has ordained for us to be. And so I encourage you to do a self-analysis. I encourage you to do a, a, a self-discovery session to get the help that you need to discover the greatness that not only lies within you, but the greatness that God wants to birth in and outside of you, which ties into your purpose so that you, so that me, so that we can press on in doing the things that gives God glory by holding on to our identity, our values, ethics, our beliefs, listen to me, morals that are par none. And we do that one day at a time, one step at a time, just a little step each day until we attain that glorious reward that God has waiting for each and every one of his children. So that after all that we've done, when we get before him, our labor would not have been in vain, or we would have not lived life just roaming around aimlessly, not knowing what our purpose is, who we are and what our purpose is. Well, that's it. That's all for today. I hope you got something out of this. Send me a note, type something in the message below, share this message, this podcast today with someone you know needs to hear this message. Again, thank you for joining me. Until next week, God bless you. Thank you for tuning in to a Better You program with Anthony McFarland. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow on your favorite podcast platform so that you never miss an episode. Thanks for listening.